What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. Season of Discovery is just a few short weeks away and I've been spending the past few days compiling pre-bis lists for all classes in the game and I'm going to be releasing those as the week progresses as we get closer to Season of Discovery. Today we're going to be talking about the Warlock and what I've done for the Warlock is I've put together a few different builds. I have a Shadow Bolt Cleave build that I put together, a Fire Destruction build, an Affliction build, and of course the Warlock tank build. So, without further ado guys, let's dive in. Okay, so the way this is going to work, guys, is I'm going to show you the build that I've done with our talents and runes, and then I'm going to go over some of the gear that you can equip for that gear slot. That would probably be some of the best pieces of gear that you can use before you dive into Black Fathom Deeps for the first time. Okay, so we're going to start off with my Warlock Destruction Shadow Cleave build. So the talents for this build are pretty simple. We're going to put five points into Improved Shadow Bolt to increase our shadow damage on that target. Uh, we're going to get five points in Bane to reduce the cast time of our Shadow Bolt. We're going to get five points in Devastation to get that extra 5% crit chance, and then one point in Improved Firebolt because we'll have our Imp out when DPSing with this build. Now for our runes, we're going to go with the Chess Rune of Demonic Tactics, uh, increase the melee and spell critical strike chance of you and your pet by 10%. Demonic Grace, Surge with Fell Energy, increasing your pet and your own dodge chance by 30%, and your chance to critically hit with all attacks by 305, which is massive. Uh, and we're going to combine that and this, so basically you're, ha you're getting a 40%, almost a, a little more than a 40% chance to crit increase. And then, of course, Shadow Bolt Volley. Your Shadow Bolt now strikes up to five targets within a chain distance of 10 yards, but for 20 reduced damage. That's not really going to matter because we're going to be critting uncontrollably. Um, so that's going to be a really good build for clearing maybe trash in the raid or doing five-man dungeons. Uh, this build is going to absolutely slap when it comes to cleave and AoE. And then for some gear pieces for this build, uh, for our headpiece, we're gonna go with the bright eye goggles, obviously from engineering to get that nine spirit, nine stamina. For our neck piece, anything of the eagle will work. You just want some intellect and stamina in this slot. And then for our shoulders, uh, Sage's Mantle of Shadow Wrath or any one of the Shadow Wrath shoulder pieces that you can find on the auction house, uh, just getting a little bit of shadow damage here for this build is going to really be good because um, as you guys can see here with Shadow Bolt Volley, we do a little bit less damage with those Shadow Bolts. So having this these few pieces of Shadow Wrath gear will actually pretty much negate that effect completely. Um, and then we're going to have for our cloak, same thing. Anything you can find with Shadow Wrath on it will be great. Um, and for our chest piece, Robes of Aragul from Shadow Fang Keep would be pretty bis uh, for this. There are some better ones like Black Velvet Robes, uh, but they're a world drop, so I would honestly just go for Robes of Aragul. You can get this from SFK pretty easily, uh, whether you're Horde or Alliance, doesn't really matter. And then for our wrists here, we want another Shadow Wrath piece. Uh, anything of Shadow Wrath will do. Anything from 7 to 9 Shadow Damage uh, will actually benefit us quite a bit. And then for our staff here, there's a bunch of options. Obviously, Staff of Shade would be the best option uh, because it's 21 Shadow Damage. Uh, but the thing is, that is another BOE. So this is going to be pretty pricey. I'm pretty sure if you're Horde, you have access to Staff of Soren Rock. Um, Sorenok, however you say that. Uh, which is a quest I'm pretty sure in Duratar. Um, but if you are not Horde, I would honestly just go for the Emberstone Staff from Deadmines. That would work just, just as well. Uh, obviously, you'll get a DPS increase by having Staff of the Shade, but Emberstone Staff would work just as good. I mean, you're getting Stamina, Spirit, and Intel from this, so maybe you'd have to Life Tap a few less times in a boss fight, so the DPS might be kind of close. Um, but I wouldn't worry about that too much at this level. And then for our hand piece, we want Hands of Darkness. These are a uh, tailor-made uh, glove slot item. Uh, five spirit and nine shadow damage on these. Uh, so if you could find those or craft them yourselves, I'm assuming if you're playing Warlock and if, if you're watching this video and you're trying to min-max at all, you're most likely going to be a tailor so that you can craft those big boots later on when you get into the raid. Uh, but yeah, Hands of Darkness would be a great spot here. Uh, great uh, p uh, gloves for this slot. Um, and if you can't get your hands on Hands of Darkness just yet, then just pick up like silver thread gloves off the auction house or bright, bright gloves or sanguine hand wraps. Uh, moving to our belt, belt of Aragul is pretty good. We get three spirit, 10 intellect from that. That should uh, do pretty good when it comes to mana conservation. Silver thread pants for our leg slot. We get eight intellect, four spirit, four stamina. Uh, so those are really good pants. And then of course, if you are a tailor, like I said, or if you just want to farm gold and buy them off the auction house, spider silk boots. Uh, are a great set of boots before you enter this raid. Um, seven spirit, 
for intellect and for stamina is pretty big uh, for a boot slot at this level. So definitely try and get your hands on those. As for our rings, we have the advisor's ring, uh, which will give you two stamina and five spell damage and two MP5. Clearly, you definitely need to farm this out. That's from, uh, from the Warsong Gulch rep uh, with honored reputation. Um, and then if you're Alliance, it'll be pretty easy to farm out the lavishly jeweled ring. If you can't, uh, and maybe if you're Horde and you don't want to go do dead mines, you can always pick up the Azora's Will Ring off the auction house. Uh, five Intellect will help you out quite a bit. And then for your trinket slots, obviously I'm just going to throw Arena Grandmaster in here, even though it really won't do anything to increase your DPS uh, and Goblin Jumper Cables or whatever you want to put in these two slots. There's not, not no real trinkets that'll benefit your DPS at this level. Um, and then for Wand, I have Cookie Stirring Wand if you want to grab that from dead mines, but you shouldn't be needing to wand too much uh, when you're trying to DPS in this raid or in these dungeons um, simply because you're going to be able to life tap and then you have also you have that increased damage so stuff is going to be dying fairly quick but let's move on to my fire destruction build so for the fire destruction build what you're going to do is put five points into cataclysm to get that five percent reduced mana cost five points into bane to reduce the cast time of your immolate um, and five points in Devastation, of course, for your crit chance increase, and then one point in Improved Firebolt for your Imp. Um, and then for our chest room, we're going to take Lake of Fire, uh, which makes Rain of Fire leave a Lake of Fire on the ground that increases all fire damage you deal and your demon pet deal to affected enemies by 40% for 15 seconds. So this is pretty big, guys. Um, and then you obviously want to pick up Incinerate for your Leg Rune, and what that's basically going to be used is in replacement of Shadow Bolt. You're not going to be using Shadow Bolt with this build. You're going to be basically spamming Incinerate, and that also increases the fire damage you do to a target. And then, of course, we're going to take Chaos Bolt on our Hand Rune, which is just a massive uh, DPS ability. The only thing with this build here is you have no constant cleave. Um, you have Reign of Fire, which you're going to be opening with on packs of mobs. Um, and you could just spam it the entire time, and let's say, you know, you're fighting a boss that has three adds, you drop a rain of fire to get some AoE and get some cleave, get that, um, you know, that fire damage, uh, increase on all of those enemies, and then you can just spam them down with incinerate and chaos bolt on cooldown, of course. Uh, so that would be the talents for that. And then as for our gear, very similar to our shadow cleave build, um, the only differences here are going to be the shoulders, you want to go with the feline mantle, um, from Shadow Fang Keep for our cape slot, our cloak slot, we want to do Elder's Cloak of Fiery Wrath, or any of the Fiery Wrath cloaks will do. Um, so if you just search up Fiery, you can see all, of, there's a ton of them, uh, so you should be able to pick one of these up easily off the auction house. So grab a Fiery Wrath cloak in that slot, and then Robes of Aragul um, for your chest should be great. And then on our Bracers, we want to go with another Fiery Wrath set of Bracers for a little bit more fire damage. And then for our staff here, this this should be pretty good. We can, we can easily pick up um, a green staff of fiery wrath or even a one-hander and an offhand if you find that first But magician staff of fiery wrath would be your absolute best in slot staff for this build uh, You're gonna get 16 fire damage from just your staff slot, which is pretty huge And then for our gloves, this will be our last piece of fiery gear um, You can pick up the rain caller mitts of fiery wrath for 11 extra fire damage So that'll be pretty strong and then for our belt same as the other spec, Belt of Aragul, Silver Thread Pants are really good, as you, of course, and then Spider Silk Boots, there's really nothing better than that at this level, and then uh, Advisor's Ring from that Warsong rep, uh, Honored, again, Lavishly Jeweled Ring if you're Alliance and you want to farm dead mines, or, or even if you're Horde and you want to farm dead mines, nothing's stopping you from doing it, but again, you can always pick up Azora's Will or Chrome Ring of Intellect, any of these Intellect Rings will do, and then for Trinkets, of course, Arena Grandmaster, Goblin Jumper Cables, whatever uh, you want to put in those slots, completely up to you. You. And then any wand will also do. I always select the cookie stirring wand. If you're going to play alliance, there's no reason to not just kind of farm that out. You're probably going to do dead mines a few times, right? So, or the maybe you want to go with uh, fire starter uh, for this build, or dancing flame. Actually, I'm just thinking about this now. Dancing flame might actually be huge. Uh, if you take into consideration the fact that your incinerate and your rain of fire are basically making enemies take a more than almost double fire damage uh, and you go oom or maybe something's at you know 10% 15% and you don't want to life tap and then start casting again because you're going to lose a ton of DPS because it's going to die too quick you know you drop a quick rain of fire and an incinerate and now you just spam your wand uh, if it's fire damage they're going to take increased damage from that so moving on to our affliction build so for our affliction build you guessed it we're going into the affliction tree so we have four points in suppression 
Uh, five points in Corruption. We want those points in Suppression so that your casts don't get resisted, especially at this level. Two points in Improved Life Tap, one point in Amplify Curse, three points in Curse of Agony, uh, and one point in Nightfall. To be honest, at level 25, your talents aren't that detrimental to how your character is going to play and how much DPS you do, so don't worry th about the fact that we don't really have that great of talents at this level that are going to benefit an Affliction spec. But these will definitely help. You obviously want instant corruption uh, and the basically 8% hit chance is great. Um, and then Amplify Curse and Improve Curse of Agony for bosses is going to be awesome as well. And then for our chest room, we have Master Channeler. What this does is it basically takes Drain Life and turns it into a dot and makes you heal more from it. Uh, you probably don't need the healing if you're in raid and getting healed by healers, but it's going to basically allow you to place another dot on the boss uh, that you don't need to sit there and channel anymore, so it's just a straight-up DPS increase, so you have to take that. Um, Everlasting Affliction, meaning Drain Life, Drain Soul, Shadow Bolt, Shadow Cleave, Searing Pain, Incinerate, and Haunt. Refresh the duration of your Corruption on the target, so you always want to take Everlasting Affliction. It's very similar to how Affliction Warlock plays in Wrath. Uh, you're going to put your Corruption up, and then when you're spamming Shadow Bolt outside of keeping your other dots up or Haunt, um, it's going to constantly refresh Corruption, so you're never going to have to cast Corruption again as long as you don't let it fall off. So that's the build. Let's head on over to the gear. The gear for this build is going to be exactly the same as our Shadow Cleave build. Uh, you want just, you know, those few pieces of Shadow Wrath gear uh, to get you up to kind of like anywhere between 40 to 55 Shadow Spell Damage, and then fill the other pieces out with like the Bright Eye Engineering Goggles, Robes of Aragul, Belt of Aragul, Silver Thread Pants, Spider Silk Boots, the same rings. Uh, you want to basically kind of balance it between, you know, three to four pieces, three to five pieces of Shadow Wrath gear for the spell damage, and then fill out your, the rest of your gear slots with Intellect, Stamina, maybe even a little bit of Spirit. Uh, so moving on to last but not least, the Warlock Tank build. So... When we take a look at our talents here, there's nothing in these trees aside from 5 points in Demonology that really is going to make your tanking great at level 25. I think just the fact of using the Metamorphosis Rune is going to make up for that though. Um, so basically all you really are going to do here is put 5 points into Demonic Embrace to get that 15% extra stamina. Uh, 5 points into Cataclysm in the de Destruction Tree because you're going to be spamming Shadow Cleave and Searing Pain. Uh, so this will make it so that all of your, basically everything you're casting to maintain threat and do a ton of AoE damage is going to cost 5% less mana. So obviously we want that. I put 5 points into Improved Corruption. I guess when you're, you know, fighting a boss maybe you can just throw Corruption up there as you're running in right before you charge maybe. And then one point in Improved Imp. I'm not sure how this is going to work. If we're going to have a pet out while we're tanking, it doesn't really say anything about that uh, in the rune. Like if we're not allowed to have a pet out. So if we are going to have a pet out, I'm assuming it's going to be the Imp giving the stamina buff and sitting back with the entire raid just DPSing for you. Um, so that's why I put this point here, but that's subject to change. And then for our runes, obviously we want Master Channeler to make Drain Life no longer a channel, just like the Affliction spec. It's going to be a dot that you throw up. Um, and it's going to heal you for 50% more each time it deals damage, so you kind of have a little bit of self-sustain there, which is really nice. And then for our Leg Rune, Demonic Grace, uh, this is basically a big cooldown that's going to give you 30% dodge chance and 305 crit, um, which is enormous. You could pop this as you run, as you charge in to a boss or, or to a pack of mobs to just, and then start spamming Shadow Cleave, um, to kind of help you just immediately get all that threat, and, uh, you're also going to be dodging 30% more, which is great. And then Metamorphosis clearly is the, the tanking choice here. Uh, it's going to increase your armor by 500%. It reduces the chance you'll be critically hit by 6%. Increases your threat by 100%. Increasing mana gain from life tap by 100%. It's just massive. Um, and Searing Pain, is, it will turn into an instant cast. Shadow Bolt will become that Shadow Cleave that hits up to three nearby enemies. Uh, Curse of Recklessness will now be your Taunt. And you'll get Demon Charge, which is basically like a, you know, an out-of-combat charge that will stun the enemy for one second. And Demonic Howl, which is basically an AoE Taunt, forcing all nearby enemies to focus attacks on you for six seconds. As for the gear for this build, we're obviously going to want those Engineering Goggles again for that Stamina and that Spirit. Uh, for our neck piece, anything of the eagle will work. Um, for our shoulder piece, same thing. You want of the eagle, get that intellect, get that stamina built up a little bit more. Remember, we do have that talent. Demonic Embrace increases your total stamina by 15%, um, but reduces your spirit by 5%. Uh, so, yeah, anything with stamina and intellect is going to be absolutely amazing for Warlock tanking. Um, I have pretty much of the eagle for my neck, shoulders, cape, 
Um, for our chest, obviously, robes of Aragul are just, there's nothing better than that for you right now. Um, for your wrist, silver thread cuffs, you want that five intel, two stamina. You can even enchant them with five intellect for a little bit more mana. Um, and then Staff of Shade, again, is probably the best in slot weapon here. This is going to increase, uh, you know, the damage of your Shadow Cleave, which is massive. If you can't find that on the Auction House or can't afford it, we can always go with a Shadow Wrath Staff, like the Magician's Staff of Shadow Wrath, uh, which is 16 Shadow Damage. And then Hands of Darkness, another Tailor Crafted uh, Glove Slot item that gives you 9 Shadow Damage and 5 Spirits. Warsong Sash. Uh, this is going to be great for the Warlock tanking spec. You get this from Ashenvale. Um, it's 9 Intellect, 4 Stamina. Can't really beat that if you're going for a Stamina tanky, you know, Stamina and Intellect Warlock build. Silver Thread Pants, again. Spider Silk Boots, again. Um, Advisor's Ring, again. That's the Warsong Rep Ring. And then in the other slot here, we do want to put a, any ring that has of the Eagle. Uh, Chrome Ring of the Eagle would be perfect for Intellect, for Stamina. Um, and then here, Trinkets might matter a little bit. Arena Grandmaster, farming this out if you're doing Warlock tanking uh, would be pretty beneficial. You're getting an extra dodge chance all the time. And then an on use that'll give you a shield that gives you from 750 to 1251 absorption. So that would be pretty useful. And then you could just throw anything in the other slot here. And I grabbed Cookie's Stirring Wand for the wand slot. However, when you're tanking, I don't think you're going to be using a wand very much. But yeah, guys, so that's all the Warlock builds that I've come up with. That's some of the pre-raid best in slot gear for Warlocks that I can find. I've done a ton of research here, and I've been looking and looking and looking for the past few days at all the classes, all the gear. I'm um, driving myself nuts, but I'm honestly so excited to play Season of Discovery. Uh, that's why I'm doing this stuff. So if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button. I really do appreciate it. And honestly, share it with a friend. Anyone who's, who's on the fence about playing Season of Discovery, send him some of my videos. I'm trying to hype it up as much as possible because uh, I really am excited and I can see that a lot of my audience is very excited as well. So uh, yeah, consider subscribing to the channel if you like the content. Turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next time I post a video. And honestly, if you want to hang out with me live, I do stream on Twitch Monday through Friday at 8 p.m at twitch.tv slash hammerdance, and I'll drop a link to that in the description below this video. But anyone who wants to access any of these builds, I'm going to share this in the community Discord in the Warlock channel, so if you want to join the Discord, this build will be there. You can tinker with it on your own, but that's completely up to you. But anyways, guys, that's all for me. Thank you all so much for watching and listening in. I'll see you all in the next one.